I love this life. It's a hard life, but it's a good life. I've been thinking a lot about the YouTube channel the last four months and what I want it to be about. And just like this morning, as I take you alongside me feeding cattle, I want to take you on a journey, a journey that shows you what regenerative agriculture is all about. Um, take you in for a closer look, so close that the images make you feel like you can smell the soil. And I don't want to make the same type of video every single time, like that's boring to me. I want videos like the nitrogen myth that are fun and entertaining and at the same time hard hitting and educational. I want videos like how to deal with trolls where it's just me taking you alongside my day cutting corn. And I want videos that show you what our cattle are because I think they're special and I love being around my cattle. And I want videos that show our mistakes and our failures because everybody fails, everybody falls, but the people who truly succeed are the ones who get back up. It's a really busy time of year. You know, you go out before the sun comes up and uh, you quit well after dark. You know, it's drilling wheat, it's cutting corn, and then after you cut corn, you pick your Milo, uh, and then you go into irrigated corn. Hopefully you're done with your Milo and we're not done cutting Milo either. So there's a lot of things that we could talk about in today's video, but oddly enough, I want to talk all about the earth. Did, did he just say worms? Yeah, earthworms. I know it sounds crazy, um, but we're talking about them for good reason. In our farming operation, you couldn't even find earthworms if you went out and dug in your field after you planted your, your wheat or your corn because we did so many farming practices like tillage and applying anhydrous that completely killed and devastated the earthworms. So today, I'm talking to you all about the benefits and why you want to bring them back to your farming operation so that you can be as excited and passionate about earthworms as I am. Well, it's really windy like they said it would be. So I'm going to take you guys over to our shed um, where we keep our bioreactors and we'll talk more about the worms. Well, here we are guys in the shed where we uh, keep the bioreactors. Why are we talking about worms today? Well, the reason is, is because of outside of my cattle that I love so much, worms really are the most important livestock that we have on our farm. Now, I know that sounds crazy, but they really are. And that's why we're talking about them today. So let's start by talking about the benefit to the soil. Earthworms improve the structure of your soil, they improve the aeration of the soil through their burrows that they make into the ground. Those burrows not only improve the absorption, absorption of water, but they also improve the staying ability of water. So when you get a large rain and it comes down, it absorbs that water quicker, better, so you, you keep more of the rain water when it comes. And then once you have that water, it stays in your soil longer. It's less likely, you're less likely to have pan evaporation with the more earthworms that you have in your soil. Earthworm activity breaks up the compaction of your soil. Those burrows can go down into the ground and break up the compaction and hard pan layers that farmers have if they've been doing years and years of tillage like we have. Earthworms have a benefit to the plant. Those burrows cause the roots to go down deeper into the soil. Once they're down into those burrows, they're able to access micronutrients down into the soil further than what they could before. If they can't get down there, the worms, if they've gone down there and they've eaten and they process that soil and they bring that back up to the top, well, they're sharing those micronutrients with the plant as they let that go through their gut biome and let those castings go out into the soil. So those are huge benefits to the roots. They can go down deeper and they're getting the micronutrients from the worm castings that is full of fungus and bacteria that are beneficial to the plant specifically nitrogen fixing bacteria. The gut biome of a worm is full of nitrogen fixing bacteria that is beneficial to the plant. There's a plant growth stimulant that I can't really pronounce. I think it's called auxin. 
But anyway, this is a hormone for the plant and it is boosted when there's a large presence of earthworm castings. Those hormones stimulate the roots to grow quicker and go down deeper into the soil than they would had they not had the presence of worm castings. The gut biome of a worm is a natural bioreactor. Now, if you've been watching our videos, you know that we've been creating these composters that are extremely beneficial to our soil health. Well, the reason they're beneficial is because they're full of worms. The worms in these bioreactors are breaking down that material but the main benefit is, is that gut biome of the worm is, is a, a perfect place to, for those bacteria and fungus to reproduce. And then they reproduce in the worm castings. And then it's just a huge system with it is causing life to grow. And that's what it does in your soil. A study shows that earthworm castings are actually a thousand times more biologically dense, meaning that they have a thousand times more bacteria and fungus in them than the surrounding soil. That's amazing. Earthworms are also known to eat species of bacteria and fungus that are negative and harmful to the plant. Earthworms actually suppress weed growth in two ways. One, there's a lot of weed seeds that earthworms will eat and therefore eliminate in the field as the plant dies and the seeds fall to the field. And they also are producing a microorganism within their gut that is actually detrimental to the weed seed even growing in the presence of that microorganism. Research also shows that bacteria living in the gut biome of a worm actually breaks down hazardous chemicals that are in our soil from pesticides and herbicides. A really cool study conducted in Minnesota showed that earthworms added to a cornfield increased the absorption of water to that field 35 times more than the controlled where they didn't have any earthworms. And the last thing that I wanna tell you guys about earthworms is the reason I actually made this video for today. Wednesday, I had a group of people come out and they toured the farm. I took them to two cornfields so I could show them the difference and the benefits of interseeding cover crops. When we went into the field with cover crops, I looked down and there was a ton of worm burrows going down into the, the soil. So when I saw those worm castings, I told everybody around me, I was like, oh man, did you guys know that 24 earthworms within a square foot of soil is the equivalency of having $30 of inputs in nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, and manganese added to your soil, $30 an acre. So I was excited about that. I saw all the wormholes and I was like, hey, I wonder how many earthworms we actually have in this, you know, if I can dig up a square foot of soil, how many earthworms do we have? So we dug up that, a shovel full of, of, the, of the, the ground and I got what I thought was a square foot. It definitely wasn't after I went out later and tried to recreate the experiment myself. Um, I was gonna actually do that for the video today, uh, yesterday where we were harvesting, but then we had a ton of issues in the field and I couldn't stop what we were doing to go make a YouTube video. So here we are now. We dug up that soil and in that square foot of soil, we found 59 earthworms. I don't know how I missed this when I was doing the video, but it's 49 earthworms. It's not 59 earthworms, 49. And like I said, it wasn't quite a square uh, shovel. So when you see 59 earthworms in less than a square foot, you're saying to yourself, Show me the money! Oh, so that's what spurred on this video. I realized, man, this is something that not a lot of farmers know about, not a lot of people know about, but it's something that we need to do. We need to be farming in a context that are going to bring back these earthworm populations. That means probably need to stop applying ammonium anhydrous because it kills earthworm populations. And we need to reduce tillage. We've gone to where we are doing our best to not till at all. We only had three quarters that we tilled this year. But in most systems, and in most cases, you're better off not tilling at all because you're gonna kill those beneficial earthworm populations. You destroy their burrows. When you till, you also kill the fungus that their gut biome has been creating. You kill a lot of those beneficial bacteria as well so that you're creating an environment and then when you add the ammonium anhydrous, you're feeding just certain types of bacteria that are feeding off of that ammonium anhydrous that you're putting out there. So if we wanna create a population of earthworms 
that is booming and has all these benefits. We wanna to try to follow as many of the soil health principles as possible. And I'll talk about the soil health principles in a future video. For today, I hope you like this video on earthworms. I hope you like the music at the beginning of the video. That comes from my good friend, Eric Goodell. If you want to be able to find Eric's music and download it for yourself, check out our show notes and I'll have the link for iTunes and Spotify. That does it for today's video. Make sure you subscribe and check out these other videos on how awesome cattle are, on how amazing regenerative agriculture is. Keep pursuing soil health. And this is what we all feel. Let's just not deny it. Something pulls and it takes.